Okay, so here we are. We are still talking about what bipolar disorder looks like. Right now, um, we're moving on from, can you hear me? This is the face of bipolar disorder. Oh, yes. yes, this is the face of bipolar disorder. Okay, um, we're moving on from symptoms and um, moving on to a whole different category of questions that they asked about interpersonal relationships. Yeah, this one's and, a little harder. Um, yeah, this one's a little harder. So um, I we talked about this before we started recording, but I, I feel like it's it's worth reminding you that you don't have to answer anything you don't want to answer and no, we can I, stop at any time. I, I got myself into this mess. Oh, oh. <laughs> you, know, you can get yourself out of it at any time. I'll find my Active way out of any too. No, I wanted to do this. It's important. And I, and I think that's another thing I want to say to you. One more soapbox, although you know me, this is not the last one. Um, <laughs> Not uh, it's not the last one. <laughs> There's one thing Lark and I talked about before we did this is that for me, part of my being able to deal with this and part of my having dealt with this so long is finding a way to share what I went through with other people in a way that they don't have to go through it too, or that they at least have better information than I had going through this. And I think at some point we are going to get into um the system and how broken it is and, and how it has failed thousands upon millions of people over the decades but um and it's still broken do not let your book lie to you it is still broken um and and it's one of those things where i i grew up in the 80s and the early 90s when you know they were still like oh you're crazy just put them in a padded room for the next 30 years they'll be all right you know that was still very much the like go-to treatment for mental health disorders was oh just lock them up they'll be fine um, and it still pretty much is that way. So anyway, um, yeah, so I wanted, I wanted to do something where I felt like I could share my story and say, look, this is all the shit I had to do and had to go through and had to learn on my own and had to be taught and whatever, please God take something out of it. So you don't have to go through the hell I went through. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's part of the, that's part of the point of doing this is is to kind of make it a little more visible that like you know there are there are folks who are struggling with severe mental illness all the, all around you they're just folks but they're also like you know experiencing things that you might not be familiar with and let's right. get familiar with them and that's what a lot so, of these good interpersonal questions that you sent me are about is i mean some of these students like these are really good questions and about things yeah. that they're personally dealing with with their family so let's yeah, yeah. let's get to it yeah so so first we're going to talk about um your interpersonal relationships and then we'll talk about theirs sure. um so the i changed the order a little bit on some of these so um how do you think your mental health struggles have impacted your relationships with other people family friends romantically I was just talking to my, my friend John about this um, yesterday, actually, ironically. Um, I've known him for 25 plus years now, um, but he's the only friend that I've ever had that long and he's the only friend that I still have from that long ago. Um, being friends with somebody who is constantly getting 51 50 and trying to kill themselves and is always you know, bouncing off the walls manic or so depressed that they just don't want to be around them because it's depressing uh it's hard it's hard it's really hard and i am painfully aware of that i don't fault the people that have got me out of their lives for doing so at all what i fault is society and our education system for failing to actually tell people um that you know just because somebody is depressed doesn't mean that that you know they're they're doing it intentionally uh and again we're not going to touch on the whole seeking attention bullshit that's i'm not even going there today that's not not going there because it does happen we know it happens but we're not going there um yeah so yeah no it's affected me a lot i my brother and i don't really have a relationship uh my mother and i barely have a relationship um john's the only friend i really have um that you know has has stuck around for a while uh, yeah i i've never really been able to hold jobs uh for longer than a few months at a time, a year, year and a half at the longest. Uh, yeah. yeah, so actually they, they asked some questions about jobs and I took them out. Mm -hmm. um, but since you bring it up, let's, let's talk about jobs just 
very briefly. So mm. I I get the impression from from talking to you um, that that the issue at jobs is is more of an interpersonal one than than it is anything else. Is that true? Um, a lot of it has to do with my own agoraphobia and my own look it up kids uh, and my own uh, I don't mean kids I was debating. Um, my own anxiety and my own issues with phone calls and you know waking up knowing that there's no godly way i'm gonna face the public today i need to call in but not being able to call in so i just go back to sleep and then feeling ashamed for that so then i don't call because i'm ashamed what hamster we talked about um so yeah so that's a lot of what it is for me um i'm really really good at what i do i've i've i you know it's one of the few things i will brag about is uh i'm very good at what i do um you're a the problem wonderful is, actor well i mean i wasn't even referring to that but um i mean i've acted okay for 38 years now no um it's funny because it's true i am uh i was in uh, sales for a while i was in food service for many many years uh, i was in management for many many years um, until i realized that being uh bipolar and trying to be in management were not good bedfellows um, the stress level of being a manager when you're dealing with food service is not cohesive. Um, so yeah, so it, yeah, no, the disease is, it has, has, has really screwed up my ability to find gainful employment. And the VA finally realized that. And finally, as of last year, put me on my hundred percent disability. Um, but they even put a little tag on there, hundred percent, totally permanently disabled and unemployable. Um, so the, the federal government considers me unemployable, if that tells you anything. Yeah, which is not for for those of you watching a, a particularly easy thing to to get the government to decide. So no, no, um, it's not. It it, took it's me a pretty high years. bar. Yeah, yeah, it's it pretty took high me twelve bar. years to get that. So okay, <coughs> okay. so um, the the next one is is related. It's about whether um, people treat you one way until they learn about your diagnosis and then treat you differently afterwards. Absolutely. Um, and again, this goes back to the stigma and the media. And I blame society and I blame our history and I blame current media on that. Uh, people are so uninformed or ill-informed or misinformed, uh, take your suffix as you choose, that, I mean, you're already fighting a losing battle when it even comes up. Like you're already fighting against somebody's preconceived notions. You're fighting against the, the instilled stigma of the media. You're fighting against, um, you know, even our parents' generation telling us like, oh, you know, that crazy Sharon, she's fucking going off again, off her meds again. You know, that was a very common expression back in the day. Even today, it's still a common expression. Um, so yeah, no, it's hard. Um, it's hard to have that conversation. I have, because I'm getting older and I, I've, uh, I checked my bank account. I'm actually out of fucks to give now. So um, because I'm getting older, I have gotten to a point where I'm very blunt with people. You know me. I mean, one of our first conversations, I was like, just so you know, I'm fucking bipolar. Like, that's something you're going to have to deal with if you want to be friends with me. Um, and that is, that's something you have to deal with because I've already dealt with it and I deal with it every day. So for me, that's something you get to deal with now. And if you can't, that's on you. Like, I, I don't have the energy to try to fight it or argue with it or battle against 200 years of oppression and stigma. I just don't. I don't even have the energy to shower. So I'm not going to try to to you know unlearn everything that you've been been fed uh it's not my job but i will be honest with you and i'll tell you how i'm feeling and i'll tell you that you know this is my condition um you know well and i and i think we're going to come back to that a little bit when we talk about all the questions that they asked about how to support people that they love um who, who there's a right way and a wrong way to do it yeah, yeah there's a right definitely. way and a wrong way to do it and the wrong way i'll just get this other way now the wrong way is oh just think happy thoughts or oh what did you try just being happy or hey why don't you just smile you'll feel better yeah at that point at any any sentence better? that starts <laughs> did you just try yeah is yeah there, have you not, tried not like why thing. don't you just like you know what actually made me feel better if i slapped you right now that would actually make me feel better <laughs> because of what you just said to me and how insanely invalidating it was yeah. slapping you would actually make me feel better um yeah you know and i do joke and i and i'm sure your students picked up my sort of sardonic humor in that letter but this is serious stuff i mean it is and i and i do joke because it's a defense mechanism it's in your book 
um, that I have built over the years to protect myself, you know? So, but we're getting way off track as far as interpersonal relationships. Actually, I don't, I don't think that we are. I feel like that's actually a, a perfect segue into the last question for this section, which is about, um, being able to be uh, vulnerable with other people and kind mm-hmm. of open up with other people and, and knowing that there's like a chance that you can get hurt. My tactic for many years and kind of to the point still is, if I'm being honest, um, was if I get to hurt you first to push you away, then you don't get a chance to hurt me. Yeah. And that's kind of how I approach relationships and, and to an extent still do. I, I, I'm more self-aware of it now. So I do try to catch myself on it and be like, dude, are you doing this because you're actually upset or because they actually wronged you? Or are you just trying to burn them before they can do it to you? Uh, so I do try to be more cognizant of that, but uh, <coughs> damn it, sorry. Um, yeah, so my, yeah, my, my thing was everyone in the world is going to hurt me. So if I just hurt them first and push them away and don't let them get close, and fill my whole life with jokes and sarcasm and and witty retorts, um, then I can live in a protective bubble and be safe and sound. The problem with that is if you actually finish that thought, uh, safe and sound, by myself, alone, forever and ever. And that part, when you have a mental health disorder, is not so great. Uh, And that's where the whole interpersonal thing, I think, really comes to a head, is that the irony, the, the sad, sad irony of it is, most people with a mental health disorder want nothing more in the world to just be held and have somebody there and not even in a sexual way or, or a relationship way, but just have somebody there for them at when they need it yet are usually not always really bad at actually letting that happen, asking for that to happen and allowing that to happen. Um, you know, so it's that, it's that sick twisted joke that God played on all of us that, you know, you desperately, the one thing in the world you desperately want and need to feel okay, you were going to do everything in your power to sabotage yourself from getting. Welcome to bipolar. Like that is it in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Yeah. That one was gonna, yeah. I'm going to stop this one. Yeah, okay. we're going to stop unless that one. There's, unless you have more to say on this. Oh, I, you know me, I could go on, on ad nauseum look it up um i'll stop doing that at some point uh no i could go on forever about this stuff uh but uh i will say having said all that uh, there is one on the interpersonal that we didn't talk about that i wanted to um, and i brought this up to you earlier um oh that the question about the dad i moved i moved that one to a different section oh you moved to something okay we will but we are going to touch on that we're we're going to come back to that because yeah. I feel like that's like you really that was a, that was actually yeah. felt felt like being a question um, about their own family, and we have mm. a whole section on that. Cool. Oh, um, <coughs> that's getting really annoying. Um, don't okay, smoke, so, everybody. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> smoke. Don't start smoking. Um, so. Uh, one person, and it's not so much their question, although it is a good question, but the way they phrased it that I want to bring up. Okay. Uh, as someone who has struggled with an SMI for years, uh, what difficulties do you think a person with mental illness like bipolar disorder and, and this is the part that I like, delusional manic episodes might face in developing healthy interpersonal relationships? And that's a key point that people don't seem to understand. Disassociative disorder and a manic episode are very, very close to each other. And this is part of the reason that it's so hard to diagnose bipolar disorder is because disassociation and even BPD, borderline personality disorder, can look a lot like bipolar given certain things. I'm not a doctor, Um, but I've been dealing with this my whole life. Um, So to answer that, the delusional manic episodes, that's a really important thing. And one of the things I mentioned in my letter that we may or may not go into detail about in the whole law enforcement section um is when i told that group of cops what i told that group of cops um and i don't remember that night um part of the reason is i drank a handle of rum but part of the reason is i literally lost it even before i started drinking i had lost touch with reality that night um i had no idea what was going on i was making shit up posting it on snapchat conversations with people that i was like you know when we talked about this that it never happened um complete disassociative sort of loss of, of, of touch with reality. Um, so I think it's really important to remember that is that a manic episode, like a, like with the symptoms going back to that, 
the delusional part of it, that's a big part of it. And it's not always there, but when it is, it can be disastrous because you do lose complete touch with reality. Um, and so I found it, I found it worth pointing out that this person, whoever they are, um, put that word in front of that. Um, so kudos to you, whoever yeah. you were. I thought that was interesting because that that definitely isn't in their book. So that's something that they that they had to have known. Mm. Um, so so yeah, somebody somebody's living some real life out there, and it's yeah. Well, real life uh, can be some heavy shit, and that that can be part of it. So kudos yeah. to you, whoever you were. That was a very good thing to point out that manic episodes do have an illusional aspect. So uh, you get five extra points for me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and find that student and figure it out. I know whoever now they're watching it. Whoever that is is going to be like, "Hey, you said I got five points, right?" Send me a message. <laughs> Can I go on my final? Save me a lot of work. <laughs> whoever you were, you get five points extra on your final, just for me. There you go. Okay. Is there anything else in this section you want? To I know. I, th I think. I think. Yeah. Now that we've okay. gone to the silly part okay. of my personality, we can stop <laughs> this right. one. Let's let's stop this one.